Hey there, Bruce, and welcome back to Eliza. It is time for us to finally figure out if we're going to get fired or not, because we just spent the entire last episode going off script, which we're absolutely not allowed to do. Also, Rainer is paying attention, and uh, he threatened us as well with, uh, you know, everything. <laughs> but I don't think we give a shit at this point, do we? Deactivation warning. You may be deactivated as an Eliza proxy soon. You've incurred two infractions on your Eliza proxy account for the following reasons. Deviating from the script. Cool. You have been deactivated as an Eliza proxy. You'll no longer be able to provide proxy services for Eliza and your keycard access has been revoked. There you go. We got fired. Apologies in advance for the awkwardness here. I'm not sure I have the right email address, but anyway, here goes. Dear Evelyn, several years ago you came and visited Professor Ralston's class to describe the research you were doing at Skanda. I was in that class, and of all the guest speakers we had, your words struck a deep chord with me. The moment you explained what drove you to create your listening machines, as you called them at the time, I finally knew what I was going to do with my life. I was a junior then, and now I'm a grad student at the UW Reality Lab, studying ways we can infer contextual information at the sentence level. It's small scale stuff, and nothing compared to what you were doing, but the hope of contributing in my own however limited way is what keeps me motivated through the hardships. Ever since I heard you left Skander and went off on the off the grid a while ago, I often wondered what happened to you. I thought about writing to you a number of times, but every time I started to draft, I would eventually stop because I thought it might be bothering you when clearly you wanted to leave everything behind. I finally worked up the nerve this afternoon after a group of high school students came through the lab on tour. Speaking with the kids, I realized that each of us pays forward our outreach, linking us in a chain that stretches backwards and forwards in time. That's why it's so important for me to be able to express my appreciation. You inspired me, and you continue to do so. Thank you. Allie. P.S. No need to reply. I'm sure you're either still off the grid or else super busy on some secret, amazing new project. Well, that was nice to go with my being fired. Well then. Nora asked if we could hang out again. Soren also wanted to meet up. Honestly, I could probably ask Ray if I could visit her place again too. I could even tell Rainer I wanted to speak with him again, though I doubt he would take me up on it. I don't have enough social energy for all of them. I'll pick one person to meet up with again. Out of all them? Ray. I'll ask Ray if I can come over. I visited Ray at her house again. She started to tell me a story about a disturbed man that showed up at one of her counselling offices. Sometimes you can just tell, you know, someone comes into the bar or steps on the bus or whatever, and you see them and you just know they're going to cause trouble. That's why I had my eye on this guy the second he walked in. I had this feeling. So by the time he started getting angry, I was totally prepared. I could see him wind himself up. When he finally made that physical threat against the proxy, I just walked in and stopped the session, looked him right in the eye and told him I was going to escort him out. He screamed in my face and kind of did some light damage to the property, but not enough for us to sue. He didn't touch me though. He knew the limit. He was just trying to intimidate me. By the time security got there, it was over already. Wow, scary. Wow, scary. How do you stay under control in those kinds of situations? <laughs> I have plenty of practice. Lots of my jobs had this component of dealing with angry people, disturbed people. You must have worked in the hospitality industry. <laughs> Before that, it was my brother, my father. I had to learn how to deal with it to survive. Maybe that's why I'm not so bad at running these counseling centers. The thing is, it's usually not personal. It's someone lashing out because they're in pain. If you can understand that and keep that in mind, it gets a little easier. And how do you keep that in mind? But how do you keep that in mind? I'm not sure. I just kind of zone out. I see someone yelling at me and it makes me wonder who's being yelled at. It can't be me because I'm not there. Huh. Maybe Eliza and me, we're not so different from each other. We both absorb the negative emotions people direct at us. That's not how I see you, Ray. Ray looks lost in thought and doesn't seem to hear my answer. 
Evelyn, is there anything I can do for you? Like, right now? You made my career possible, you know. Without Eliza, I'd still be working random jobs here and there with no purpose or plan. So, I feel like I owe it to you to pay you back somehow. You don't owe me anything. I'm not sure you owe me anything. Maybe I'm not good for much, but I like to support people. Like, if you ever wanted me to come over and cook you a meal or something... That's not necessary, really. Oh. Okay. I understand. Uh, sorry, I was just thinking. You have a decision to make about what you'll be doing in the next chapter of your life and all. And, uh, I have a feeling, whatever you do, it'll have a pretty big impact on the world. If you want it to. And really, you've had one already with Eliza. But now you're going to the next stage, whatever that is, and, uh, if there's a chance that... Sorry, I'm not making a lot of sense here. I'm... I hope you can feel good about what you're doing because, well, because I want you to be happy. You've worked so hard and for so long to try to help people and you deserve to be happy. You really do. Ray, thank you. I'll let you know soon, okay? Yeah, okay. Let me know soon. The air is so clear and cold here. There's an icy breeze coming over the sound. I wonder how many people I'm seeing right now. All of them with their own feelings and desires, their own fears and hopes and dreams and disappointments, the weight and significance and complexity of human lives. From a vantage point like this, it seems so small and distant, like I'm not a part of it, even though I know I am. I'm a part of humanity, even though I don't always like it, even though it sometimes pushes me away. I don't know why it took so long, but at least I have an answer now. It might not be the only answer, but it's good enough for the moment, and that's more than I had before. Yes, I'm sure now. I'm going to... Oh man, I don't know, I'm not ready for this. Return, return to Skander and work for Rainer on developing Eliza. I kind of want to go back to Eliza, but I hate Rainer so much. Like, he's my least favorite of them all. <laughs> Soren is very misguided. Continue to work as a proxy with Ray until I'm a licensed counselor. Let's go with that. I think uh, Evelyn's good at helping people. On a personal level, you know. The experience of working in the counseling office changed me. I always wanted to help people. Now I realize the best way is listening to people one-on-one, -on -one, with care, with humanity. But no, no, this, this will work. <laughs> Are you sure? I promise. Please be safe, Damien. Of course I'll be safe. Would anyone like to have more wine? I think I'm good for right now. Nah, see? See, there it goes. The flames shudder and wobble as they begin to spread to the logs, which crackle and hiss at the heat. After a while, the wildly sleeping flames begin to steady themselves, and we settle in around the pit. Ah, fire. Agent of destruction and creation. Mm. Something nice about a campfire deep in the woods, isn't there? Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming out here with me. I know camping isn't really your thing. Well, I mean, not Evelyn's thing, but I don't know about you, Nora. Maybe a couple times, when I was a kid. I thought maybe since we're in pretty deep on all the things we're working on right now, we could all use it. I used to, you know, when things got really bad, I'd come out into the woods and just be there. And it helped me. So I thought you know, maybe it would help you too. I don't know if it'll inspire you or what, but if more people could experience something like this, you know, something with the same meaning it holds for me. It is nice. Honestly, I've been doing all right. Better than before, that's for sure. Finals are soon, but I'm not too worried. You know, Evelyn's got her dissertation to finish up. Oh, how's that going, Evelyn? Oh, Nora. Nah, I know. You know you're not supposed to ask how the dissertation is going. Is that a rule? Pour me that drink anytime. I yeah, see. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Let's have a drink. <sighs> I'm still kind of freezing, even with this fire going. 
Nora reaches for her backpack and pulls out a thermos. She hands out plastic cups and pours into them a warm, dark liquid. Okay, this is delicious. You know, I've never actually had mulled wine like this before. No, in my family, we always had it around this time of year. You take red wine and add, what, cinnamon, orange? Yeah, those, and cloves, and um, anise, star anise, and honey. That's it. Quite simple. It's really warming me up. <laughs> That's what it's for. <sighs> Ugh, so good. Evelyn, you doze off or something? No, no, I'm awake. I was just looking at the fire. Kind of staring at it, I guess. What do you see? Everyone. People. Us. I don't know what that means. I think if we were going to make something to help people, it would be something that helped them see themselves. Something that reflected back on them somehow. Just a thought. It's probably nothing. No, no, I, I like that though. Yeah, something to help you reflect. I think that's the right track. I'm really looking forward to working on these ideas with you two. And just as soon as all this nonsense with school is over. Everyone regards the fire in silence for a while, sipping Nora's mulled wine. There's so many bad things happening in the world right now, but I, I don't know. Somehow, for some reason, I feel like the future is going to be okay. I don't know why, I just, I have this feeling that we're the ones, we're, we're the ones who are going to fix it. Not we, like, you know, you or me, but I mean, like, our generation. Hmm. Perhaps. Maybe we will. Uh, the important thing, the important thing is to try. I feel like that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to try. Sometimes you get tired of trying. Well, at least I do. I wonder what things will be like 10 or 20 years from now. You know, what we have achieved, our goals. What would we say to each other? What would we say to our younger selves? The future we want, the future we're trying to create. Did it even happen? Damien looks up at the sky. Future selves, tell us if it happened, okay? Come back in time, just tell us that you made it happen, please. Damien, it's the wine. It's more than just the wine. <laughs> I'm just I'm just interested in the future, that's all. My future, your future, humanity's future. <laughs> of course, right now, the only future I can picture is the headache I'm gonna have tomorrow morning, but... No reason to worry about it now. You know what, you're right, I'll have some more. Of course. <laughs> I think I'm passing out. Well, it is pretty late. Good night, Evelyn. All right, good night, Evelyn. Hey, I know you've been working hard, so have a good rest, okay? You deserve it. Oh, this is Darren. He came back, but now I can't go off script again. Hello, Darren. Hi. It's nice to see you again. Thanks. You guys sent a lot of reminders. I was ignoring them for a long time, but yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I decided to come back. Weirdly enough. It's been a while since we last spoke. How have you been since our last session? I mean, ups and downs, right? Everybody has ups and downs. You know, sometimes I, I feel like I'll be fine and I'm just ridiculous for getting caught up in something like this. And then sometimes I am caught up in it and it feels like getting pulled under the ocean and you know, getting sucked down inside this vortex and you, and, you, and you can't breathe or move or anything, tossed around underwater, There's nothing you could do. So I, uh, I went to a psychiatrist and got the medication you recommended, but it was a couple of months before I actually took it. For, for some reason, I couldn't bring myself to, um, not right away. Why do you think you weren't able to start right away? I don't know. I might have been afraid. You know, afraid it would change me somehow. Or that I would be dependent on it, or that I was weak for needing it. But eventually, I just got tired of feeling like shit all the time. Just tired of it. And I figured I had nothing left to lose. I either try it or go on like before, right? So I did, and it was, it was, it was interesting. How was it interesting? Uh, well, it didn't, definitely didn't solve my problems, you know? I mean, it didn't, it didn't fix me or fix the fact that the world is the way it is. Man, I wish we had a pill that did that. It didn't turn me into someone else, even though I might have wished it could. 
It definitely didn't make me happy or fill the void or anything, but but it did do something, I think. I think it helped me realize that it's possible to feel different. I got a glimpse of something, of, of, of what life could be like. You know, a life where what I know is still true, but I'm just more okay with things. I, yeah, I don't even know if that's better, really. I, listening to myself now, it's a little weird to talk about being okay with all the problems going on in the world, but maybe there's a way to acknowledge the truth without it hurting so much. So am I just numbing myself? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure I want to continue with the medication, but well, anyways, I, I have plenty for now, so I, I, I think I'll just you know use it up and make a decision then. Let me know if you'd like to try something different. I can make more recommendations. It's important to find the right balance that works for you. Okay, sure, yeah. You know, at one point I read an article that said some people are just naturally happy and other people are naturally more sad. So I wondered if I just happened to be a sad person. And if that was the case, then maybe that's just me, you know, how I am naturally. But then I thought, no, something feels wrong about that. This, this isn't just a kind of, you know, melancholy. It's, it's the way I've been, the way I've, the way I've felt. It's too much. It's, it's not a way to live. So, so I need to figure this out, whatever it is. Do you feel you are on the path to figuring it out? Maybe, maybe not. Listen, uh, the, the real reason I'm here is to say thank you. Not to Eliza, but to you. I had a bad outburst last time and I, and I got emotional and I just wanted you to know it wasn't your fault. You, you told me your name and uh, I won't forget that. Just a little moment of kindness and connection. Look, it was the smallest, simplest thing, but it meant a lot to me for some reason. I think about it a lot. I, I know you don't make much money and uh, thank you, Evelyn. Thank you for listening to me. You know, the, the more I, the more I, I go through the world, those, those little moments, it's those little moments. Sorry, I just, I'm, now I'm just rambling. Please go ahead. Talk about whatever's on your mind. No, that's, that's it. That's, uh, that's it. Thank you, Darren. Now I feel guilty because that wasn't even off script. Telling him our name was on part of the script. I'm glad your medication seems to be helping. If, the, if there was one person I wanted to go off script for, it was this guy. <laughs> and I can't. Let me know any time if you have updates you'd like to share. Yeah, I will. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jesus. A hundred dollars is overkill. Evelyn, that guy. Wasn't he the client from a while back? Hang on. Hold that thought, Ray. I got mail. Dear Miss Shino Aubrey, it was a pleasure to meet with you to discuss your interest in the Master of Science degree in Mental Health Counselling. As I noted, this course of study is designed to prepare its students to pursue licensure and employment as a mental health counsellor in various settings, including addiction treatment centres, community-based organisations and private practice. We feature small class sizes and accessible and highly regarded faculty and a number of internship partners for real world experience. You mentioned your background in computer science, which might be seen as somewhat unusual for someone interested in becoming a licensed mental health counsellor. In my experience, counsellors come from all walks of life and situ all situations. At Viridian, we're interested in developing highly skilled, rigorously ethical and profoundly reflective counsellors from a wide variety of cultural and socioeconomic backgrounds who will work to benefit their wider communities. To this end, your experience in this technology industry does not strike me as any more unusual than those of other students in our program. On the contrary, your perspective as someone who has worked to address mental health from the angle of computer science would be a welcome addition to our program. I encourage you to apply. Nice. The one who scared you on your first day? Yeah, it was. He didn't scare me. I was just sad for him. He seemed a lot better this time around. He was taking his medication, making an effort. That's what I love about this job. Seeing people start to get better. Ah, uh, makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, maybe it does. 
So, have you found a school yet? I've found at least one that seems promising. I need to get my materials together to apply. That's awesome. I'm so happy for you, Evelyn. I'll miss you when you're gone, but I think you're making the right choice for yourself. It's funny how you came to counseling through trying to automate it at first. What a good story. I can just see the article someone would write on you. It's a little early for that. I just hope I can do well. I'm sure you will, Evelyn. I know you will. There are so many things I learned just recently. I realized you don't need to play life like a game you're trying to win. I realized the contribution you make to the world isn't always about having the largest effect possible. You don't need piles of money or a case full of awards. Grandiose projects have unintended consequences. Sometimes, the best you can hope to do is help people, one by one, in your own way. Sometimes, just listening to someone is its own reward. Those are the components of a satisfactory life. It's a life I intend to build for myself, starting today. Well, that's a pretty good ending. I think I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> Obviously, those uh, different choices about what we're going to do in our future is what's going to lead to other endings. I'm not going to do another um, another ending. I'm going to leave it at that. That's the canon ending for my run, as far as I'm concerned. Because uh, I don't think I could have gone any better, frankly. And uh, I, Man, the game was so good. So good. The writing was amazing. I really identified with a lot of the, a lot of the characters. For better or worse. <laughs> anyway. I'll let the credits run, and if there's a post credit scene, as always, I'll be back for that. But, until then, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next series.